Being a woman in the engineering field is not easy. I know that for a fact because my wife is an engineer and I've seen some of the struggles that she's dealt with and some of the challenges that she's had to overcome. Which is why I am thrilled to introduce our newest show on the EMI platform, Women in Engineering, Success Stories from STEM Professionals. In this first episode, I'm going to introduce your host for the show. It's not gonna be me, it's gonna be a woman who is an engineer and she spent a lot of her career inspiring other women. She's confident now, but how did she get confident? What did she do to be successful? We're gonna cover that in this first episode. And then beyond that, she's gonna bring other successful women in the field to you. I am thrilled that we're adding this podcast to our platform because it's needed and we know that it's gonna help many women to be successful in the field of engineering. Let's jump right in to our first episode. All right, now it's time to jump into the main segment of our episode. But before we dive into today's fascinating historical journey around women in engineering, let's take a moment to understand the essence of this podcast. Women in Engineering, Success Stories from STEM Professionals. This is meant to be a platform where we will celebrate and amplify the achievements of women in engineering throughout history and in the present day. Our goal is to illuminate their accomplishments, shine a spotlight on the obstacles that they've overcome, and provide insights into the ever-evolving landscape of engineering. Each of these episodes will feature insightful interviews with trailblazing female engineers, which I'm going to introduce one to you in a second here, engaging discussions on diversity and inclusion, invaluable career advice, and a lot of other topics that'll be relevant to you. So whether you're just a budding engineer, a seasoned pro, or you're just curious about the world of engineering, this podcast is for you. All right, so I'm not going to be the one hosting this podcast. So now I'm excited to introduce our host for this podcast, Tiffany Tichi. With over 19 years of engineering experience, Tiffany is more than just an engineer. She's a STEM advocate, an international TEDx speaker, a best-selling author, and a beacon of inspiration. Raised in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Tiffany is also a dedicated youth mentor and a traveler with a zest for life. Now, Amongst her many accomplishments, Tiffany is a senior mechanical engineer and author of children's books, including What Can I Be? STEM Careers from A to Z and the STEM Crew Kids Adventures series. She's the host of the Read It Right radio show on WDRB Media, owner of Thrive Edge Publishing, Inspired Authors Publishing, holder of a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and a master's degree in engineering management from the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. So, Tiffany, welcome to our EMI platform. We're so excited to have you. Can you just take our listeners through your career journey to date so that they can see why you're the perfect host for this new show? Well, thank you, Anthony. So if you want to know a little bit about me, this is my journey. My name is Tiffany Tichi. And so I started out as a curious young girl, loving math, asking those questions, and then decided, oh, I don't want to be a lawyer. I want to go into something that deals with problem solving, math and science. So my parents, my mom, an educator, my dad, an entrepreneur, got my brother and I into a math and science Saturday Academy. From there, we learned the value of problem solving. So engineering was where it was at. And so I decided to go into undecided engineering to University of North Carolina in Charlotte and went into mechanical engineering. From there, I continued on my studies as getting my master's in engineering management. And then from there, I've been working dealing with mechanical engineering, doing all different types of things as far as anything that moves, I needed something to see. So I deal with pumps, pipes, valves, the energy sector. And so I've been doing that since. But my passion is also being not only just sharing as far as engineering, but being able to share with others. And so by doing that, I noticed that a lot of kids have never met an engineer. So I said, why don't I put it in writing? So I was able to now not only represent as an engineer, but put it in writing and become a children's book author. And the journey's been great with what can I be STEM careers from A to Z to STEM crew kids adventures to being able to be on TEDx talks to South Africa, travel the world. And so the sky's the limit on my passion for trying to get, especially our girls, our women into engineering. So I'm excited to represent as a host of women in engineering because I live it every day. <laughs> so thank you, Anthony. All right. So Tiffany, you're obviously passionate about women in STEM, women in engineering. Like you said, you're living it every day, but 
I think what you've done that's really impressive is that you've taken it to the next level. So you didn't just sit there and say, hey, we need more women in engineering or we need more kids to get interested in STEM. You took action. You wrote a book about it. You did the TEDx talk. You've kind of traveled all over the place and have done so much stuff, which is, again, why you're a perfect host for this show. So getting back to this new show, Women in Engineering, what are some of the topics and discussions that our listeners can expect to hear about in the coming weeks? Great question, Anthony. In the coming weeks, our guests will be engaged in discussions about the challenges and opportunities of being a woman engineer, the latest trends in engineering, the stories of successful women engineers, as well as the impact of women in engineering. All right, Tiffany, those are awesome topics. So let's go back to your career a little bit, because, you know, this is what a lot of women in engineering are going to come to the show to listen about, right? They want inspiration. They want to build confidence. They're excited about their career, but maybe worried about some things. Talk a little bit about like some of the challenges that you faced in your career journey and kind of what pushed you over those barriers. Like, how are you able to deal with that and, and, and get through those to be successful like you are today? Right. Well, being a woman in engineering, it's a male dominated field. And so I've been able to live it and had various experiences. I could walk into a room where it's just all men in there. And a lot of times we get, you know, they start thinking we're the admins and I have to let them know, hey, no, I'm the responsible engineer. Like I'm going to be the one deciding if we're going to use this equipment. And so we've had those different types of things. So sometimes I have to correct them and let them know what my position is and what my competency is. And I've earned this degree as far as being able to represent. And so a lot of times we have to try to share and, you know, the stigma of being an admin and no offense to admins, but we don't just take notes. We are there to also contribute. And so those are some of the things and barriers that we've had to deal with um, and just seeing more representation in these fields and seeing more women representing is, is key. Like it is a male dominated field, but knowing that I'm there, I earned it as far as being there and I'm just as valuable and bringing something to the table has been a thing. One quote from um, Shirley Chisholm is, if they don't bring a seat at the table, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. And so I'm all about making sure that I'm bringing something to the table and I know that I'm worth it. So that has been my journey, definitely as a woman in engineer. No, I love that. I love that quote too. If they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. And you yes. seem like the person that would bring a couple of folding chairs and be ready I know, to right? go. <laughs> love it. Um, so, so let me ask you this, going back to what you just said, because I think it's very important. I do think that, I mean, for all young engineers, especially for female engineers, you could get in situations where, you do have to kind of exert yourself in a way where you say, hey, I'm the engineer here. I'm in charge in a sense. I'm going to give you direction on what you need to do, whether it's a contract or another consultant, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we know that that's maybe what you need to do, but how does someone build the confidence to feel comfortable to actually do that? Because you're someone who's obviously comfortable enough to do it at this point in your career, but how does that confidence develop? It's a, it's not overnight. <laughs> so it, it's constantly reminding yourself, putting yourself with mentors, those that are representing to feed those positive, surrounding yourself around positive influencers, as far as those that's maybe already there that can encourage you as well. I think that's been helpful. Having a mentor is one who's advising you, um, having a sponsor, someone in the room that can vouch for you when, you know, Tiffany's capable of doing it, having those type of things has been very helpful as well. So I think representation of someone who's maybe can help encourage has been very helpful and having those moments of knowing, reminding yourself of your why, why did I decide that I wanted to be an engineer? I think that's also reminding me as well. And knowing that I'm paving the way for others. And these women need to know, and these girls need to know someone else has paved the way for you to get there. And I'm a living example that you can do it too. And I think that's been the valuable part of remembering my why, having some positive influence has been important and the mentorships has been helpful as well to make it through those days when that happens. No, that's awesome. And, and the reason that that's so important is because Tiffany was able to build her confidence through a lot of mentors and guidance from other successful female engineers, but it's not that easy for women engineers to find those mentors, to find that guidance. That's the reason, one of the main reasons that we wanted to start this podcast and this show, because we're going to bring successful STEM women to the table on these episodes. Tiffany's going to talk with them. She's going to dissect their careers with them. She's going to 
learn about the struggles that they dealt with or the things that they did to build their confidence and sharpen their skill sets. So now you can basically learn directly from them without having to track them all down and find them and ask them those questions. And who knows, maybe you'll be able to reach out to some of them through LinkedIn and get some guidance and get some career help from them. I mean, that's really the point of this podcast. And when we were looking for someone to host this show, we've had Tiffany on our podcast before. She's written articles for us before. You don't have to talk to her long to know that she is a force when it comes to a woman in the engineering field who's interested in getting more women and helping more women succeed. And so she's really perfect for that. And Tiffany, what do you hope, what's your goal through hosting this podcast? What do you really hope to achieve around, you know, this idea of more women in engineering? The biggest part is just knowing that we're not alone. And knowing that there are other women that are experiencing this and you're not alone either. And knowing that you got some ones that's already experienced it can give you some input from their experience. And it's all about the journey, understanding people's, everybody has a story to tell. And to be able to have those different stories and knowing that you're not by yourself and that you can, you've got these that's experienced it. I think that's the biggest piece. I want people to take away these stories that we're telling as women in these fields of engineering that you can do it too. And I think building a legacy, we're building a legacy. Now we're passing on um, our journeys and then being able to pull up. It makes my day when I see a young girl and I've talked to them and they now see and they become that engineer and they come back and say, I remember when you told me, that's what makes my day when I know I've made an impact. So I'm hoping that this podcast will also, when they come back and they become that engineer, that they say, I remember when I heard you on that podcast, encouraging women in engineering. And so that's what really makes my day. So hopefully that's where those takeaways come from it. That's awesome. No, and I think that's exactly really the primary goal of the show. And we're excited about that. And so we're going to shift gears here for the rest of the episode. And this was a good transition because Tiffany mentioned that, you know, you're creating a legacy here, right? And you want to help more women, not just get into engineering, but this is for women in engineering right now that can get advice and grow and build that confidence. But there are women that have come before you in the past and they've also helped. They're also trailblazers and they were some of the first women in engineering to kind of get engineering, get women on the map in the world of engineering and really be able to start this process. So we're going to shift our gears here a little bit to the past. And it's a past that's really been sculpted by some remarkable women engineers whose contributions to the industry have really resonated through the ages. And we're just going to talk about a couple of them very briefly. And then you know, we'll wrap up our first episode. And then in our next episodes, we're going to start bringing actual working female engineers to these episodes to help inspire and enlighten you on your journey as a woman in engineering. Okay, so the first one I want to talk about here is Edith Clark. In 1918, Edith Clark became the first woman to earn an electrical engineering degree from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. She went on to teach electrical engineering at the University of Texas for 10 years, making her the first female professor of electrical engineering in the United States. How about Edith Clark, Tiffany? Edith Clark's journey showcases the power of determination and resilience. She achieved significant milestones in a time when women's participation in engineering was rare. Her story teaches us that regardless of the challenges we face, dedication and persistence can lead to a groundbreaking achievement. Yeah, she's she was pretty amazing. And what's awesome about what Edith Clark did is that there weren't podcasts like this back then to be able to right. help to help women and give them, you know, the information that they needed. And so it's like in any movement, you need a couple of people to start it and to get it going. And they're doing it more on their own. Whereas now, obviously Tiffany's done a lot already. And we're hoping that through this show we can even, you know, provide more resources so that some of the struggles that these women that we're highlighting went through you're going to maybe have to go through some challenges, but hopefully not as many as them. That's the idea. We, we want to keep making it easier for women in engineering to be successful. Mm -hmm. The next one is Emily Roebling. Emily Roebling was an early champion for breaking the glass ceiling for women in STEM fields. She is best known for her contribution to the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge, which was completed in 1883. And she was a special person. I've read a lot about the Brooklyn Bridge being from New York and being fascinated by it. And she was amazing. Tiffany, your thoughts on Emily? Wow. We talk about the bridge. We talk about civil engineering. <laughs> uh, my brother's a civil engineer. So I'm passionate about 
just that powerful that she's representing. So Emily Robles' role in the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge exemplifies the importance of breaking barriers and advocating for recognition. Her determination not only helped complete a monumental engineering project, but also shattered gender norms in engineering leadership. Her story teaches us the significance of fighting for recognition and equality. I love it. Yeah, inspiring. And if you ever want to really be inspired, read more about Emily and her role in the Brooklyn Bridge because she had a role, but because of sickness, she had to take a bigger role. And she kind of stepped up, rolled up her sleeves, jumped in and really, I want to say really got the project done, quite frankly, if it wasn't for her. So um, if any of you are really looking to learn about the history of women in the engineering, Emily's story is a powerful one. And she's often remembered for the Brooklyn Bridge or being one of the driving forces behind it. So that's good stuff. All right. Lillian Gilbreth. Lillian is a heralded as a pioneer in the field of industrial engineering and psychology. And she's often referred to as the mother of modern management. She became the first female member of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers or ASME and worked with General Electric to improve the design of kitchen and household appliances. So Tiffany, you're a mechanical engineer. Your thoughts on Lillian? <laughs> Yes, when I when I heard she's the first female member of ASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, I was like, wow, she's representing me. <laughs> she's paved the way. We talk about these women who's paved the way. So Lillian Gilbert's multidisciplinary contributions reminds us of the value of integrating various fields. You know, she started out with industrial engineering. She also has psychology and a household appliances designs illustrates the importance of thinking beyond traditional boundaries. Today's engineers can draw inspiration from her ability to bring diverse disciplines together to drive innovation. Wow, she's powerful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these women are all amazing. And we, we just wanted to highlight a few women here on the first episode, just to kind of give us a baseline, right? This is the past. This is how women were introduced into engineering. Now we're kind of taking it forward with Tiffany, who's done a lot of work, hoping to create more inspiration for women in engineering and trailblazing her own career. And now she's going to really use this platform to get others on board here that she can talk to and again, bring inspiration to you. But the history of women in engineering really serves as a testament to the determination, the innovation, and the resilience that, that really transcends time, right? So by learning about some of these past experience today, women in engineering today can really draw strength, draw guidance and inspiration as they navigate their own paths in the engineering world. These women of the past do remind us that progress is built on a foundation that they laid and their stories will continue to shape and influence the field today. And just one more time, I'll reinforce this. These women didn't have mentors. They didn't have guidance. You will. And hopefully this podcast will add to the resources that are available to you as we kind of try to help you in your career. So Tiffany Tichi, I want to thank you for agreeing to go on this journey with us at EMI for agreeing to be the host of this show. I know you'll do a great job and we thank you so much for really being willing to put the time and effort in. Thank you, Anthony. I'm looking forward to, and thank you for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of women in engineering success stories from STEM professionals. From this point on, Tiffany Tichi will be taking it from here and guiding you through the many conversations that she's going to have with successful women in engineering. And I hope that you'll subscribe to our channel here to make sure that you're getting each and every episode. Our goal is to help you be the best engineer you can be, and we plan on doing it. So we hope we'll see you next week.